then double click and you get the user interface. That's it. That's it. That's all you need. You don't need to go back and forth through various different softwares to get your systems up and running. Everything is included in a coherent and very simpler to use than before user interface that is responsive, multi-platform, and um, which looks like, like this. At first, you will not get here because there is no uh, built-in preset. At first, you will get straight into the configuration wizard. And as you see, you have to read, there's contextual help, and we're basically hand-holding you all the way through the process. First step is to basically enter the dimensions of your room because it's nice to make it look like yours, and also because some of this data will be used later on for waveforming. To optimize waveforming results, we need to know the length of your room. That's where we get it from you. Next step, you're just going to declare your speaker layout. And that, that, that can now be done with just a few clicks. Let's say we want to do 944, four. select my basic template, and I, I add my, my three extra subwoofers because who wouldn't do waveforming? <laughs> then if I want to go beyond that, I click expert mode, and I can add a top channel for Oracle as an example. Here I've got all the, the available channels we support with the with a bug that's going to soon disappear. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you get the idea. Next, routing. If you want to do everything through Dante, just click Dante. You know, route everything like that. And maybe your subwoofer, you want them to go through, through the analog outputs because they're active subs. And then you just play noise to make sure that it's routed where it should be. And next, you save the preset because your configuration is done. And from there, you've got two options. Either go home and play content on your uncalibrated systems or go into the, go into the calibration, which supposedly is the main reason you got a train up in the first place. That's for our cal calibration technology. Again, it's a step-by-step -step process, which is self-explanatory. For those who have used Trinov, we used to have um, a self-powered uh, microphone with a battery built in. That's gone. Mm -hmm. It's now getting power from the processor, which means that you don't have to power it on and off when you're instructed to do so. The unit is going to do it itself in the process when needed. The other thing is every microphone are individually calibrated at the factory. And they used to come on a, the, cap, the compensation file used to come on a USB stick. You would have to insert into the processor, update the, the file, select it. Now it's pulled from the microphone into the processor, and that's, how, that's when you have your, your green tick. So you, you literally just have to plug it and follow the, follow the process. These are just instructions. This is just making sure we've got sound everywhere either with uh, automatic rotation of click noise or by manually clicking on all the speakers and making sure we've got noise everywhere. If there's too much level difference between all the speakers, again, you can go into expert mode and basically implement some offset because your front speakers are hotter than the surrounds and tops. It's pretty straightforward. Any point like next? That does not have to be precise. The optimizer will do the precise yes. adjustment. That's just getting the ballpark so that some speakers aren't blowing you out of room while others aren't loud enough to get to the back. Yeah. And here we, we're basically guiding you through the process, asking you uh, how do you want to do it? Do you want multiple measurements for your basic calibration? Are you going to use waveforming or not? And I'm, I'm going to do waveforming just to show you how we've integrated the waveforming process into it. Uh, we've added, you know, feature that allows you to walk outside of the room if you don't want to live through those loud bursts. So there's a timer mm -hmm. so that when you calibrate, you do five seconds and up to 30 if you walk very slowly <laughs> uh, to get out. Uh, you get all the information in real time from the calibration right at your fingertips. Uh, for advanced users, if there's any problem, uh, we've got, you can unblock and override the default, the default settings for the calibration so you don't have to go back and forth into different pages. 
Then you move on. Emitting subs, absorbing subs, you select them like that. Then automatically gives you where you should place the microphone for the waveform calibration. It shows you the distance, shows you where you shouldn't place the microphone. Gives you the opportunity to, to, to do next and then calibrate those measurement points one by one. And you don't have to keep track on a piece of paper because it's going to tell you exactly what which one is calibrated and which one isn't. And basically from there, if you go through the process, of course we're not doing it here, you're done. And then you've got your working unit. That's the home page. That's pretty much day-to-day -day operation. That's kind of a, an expanded view of the app, and which is you know s consistent design. If you've used the, the mobile app, you, you would you would you would recognize some uh, graphical pattern here. So source selection, some information about the incoming signal, volume control, I mean, all basic stuff that you need on a daily basis. With the addition of having gearboxes here, if you want to customize your sources, and let's say rename them or display Dante as an input if you're in a studio application, you hit the shortcut here at the gearbox. You come and rename your sources, etc., etc. If you want to clean up your presets because some of them are irrelevant, same, you've got your got your, your shortcut to get to the preset page here. If you want to uh, set up the decoders, you can say that, okay, for left for my left rear surround, I want that channel to be decoded. That's all doable with straight shortcuts you can see here. And last, just a few examples, because then we could go on and on and on and on. Target curve, <coughs> a, lot more quick, a lot quicker than before to edit. So if you want to have, let's say, a downward curve across all speakers, you can draw it like this. If you want to, let's say, edit on top of that only the surround speakers to give them a little more tilt because they're aggressive, you can do that without affecting the left and the right. Or the, or the left was still selected, my bad. But you, you get it. And in fact, if I select a calibrated preset, on top of the target curve, you see also the before and after correction response. So you can see the effect of the target curve, whether the target curve hits the result or not. So yeah, it's much more intuitive and very handheld through the process. And I guess that gives you a first nice quick overview. Now, if you go back to the presentation, feel free to stop me because I just realized I keep talking and uninterrupted <laughs> again. It might be tiring. Um, next. And I think that's the, the last slide, actually. Just, just half an hour.